Wherever we visit with Farage at large, we try to find a local site of real, genuine interest that says something about the background of the area. And it was a great pleasure and privilege earlier on today to visit the old RAF base at Tangmere. Well, Bogner Regis is tonight's show, and just a few miles away is this military aviation museum. The place is better known as RAF Tangmere. Until 1970, the RAF were here. And here you can see a Hawker Hunter. Here you can see a Gloucester Meteor. Both these planes, in their different times, broke airspeed records flying along the coast from Littlehampton to Bogner Regis. It's a place where Sir Douglas Bardafew flew, the famous pilot who'd lost his legs and yet carried on flying and in the end finished up in Colditz. But the bit that really interests me is 1940. The Spitfires, the Hurricanes that flew from here, the men that flew from here, the men and women on the ground that helped them. And that was the time, 1940, when everyone thought that the Germans were about to invade. And it was just the heroics of what is known as the few that saved us from that fate. The Battle Royal begins. The Royal Air Force are still shooting them down at the rate of about four to one. Here in the museum is the wreck of a 1940 Hawker Hurricane Battle of Britain plane successfully shot down several German aircraft. Uh, but in the end, this museum, this history, isn't just about bits of machinery, it's about human beings. And David Lott from the museum joins me to tell the story of the young man that flew this plane. Yes, he was 20 years old, um, Sergeant Dennis Noble. He joined the RAF in 1938 as an auxiliary. He was an engineer and then finally ended up on 43 Squadron in August 1940. He was launched to take on with the squadron 30 aeroplanes um, over to defend Ford Airfield, which is just up the road. Mm. And he was probably wounded severely or killed in the cockpit. And his aircraft plunged into a road just outside Hove the wreckage was quickly bulldozed away. Um, a coffin was largely filled with sand and sent up to his mum and dad up in hmm. Redford. And he had his funeral. And that would probably be almost the last we heard of Dennis Noble. Until a couple of people at the museum here asked if they could do an archaeological dig in the road some 50 years later. And they dug down and sure enough, they found the aircraft and this wreckage here and also the remains of poor Dennis. So we've given, in a way, Dennis a life after death here at this museum. Mm. And this, it, the way with it smashed up and everything, is something that's just frozen in common. It's, it's an amazing story. But there's another story that David hasn't told us, but he will. <laughs> but he will in a moment. <laughs> Among the many exhibits here are a group of medals to Air Vice Marshal George Lott, who, David, was your father and was station commander here in 1940. Well, no, he was CO of 43, so. Right. CO. Um, and he flew largely on the Dunkirk stuff, and later, as the Germans advanced through France, they were operating in France, going out in the morning, doing several missions, and then flying back to Tangier. On one occasion, he went with 16 aircraft, and two of them ended up back at Tangmere. Really? It was a really, really bad time. But he was shot down um, on July the 9th, 1940. He tried to get his aircraft back to here, but it, the engine conked out just over Ford Airfield at 600 feet, and he bailed out. He did very well, my dad. He, he started life as a boy cadet at um, Henlow and um, at the age of 15, and he ended up at Air Vice Marshal. Yeah. at the end of his career and he got a DSO and a DFC to do. It's a great story, yeah. it's a great human story and David's sort of living history really if you come and visit the museum and I would say to you if you've got kids and grandkids you're in this area come to this museum it's the kind of history they really ought to know about. <laughs>